Hi, so the first question is that we need to find the length of A. To do this, we're going to be using the cosine rule. To apply the cosine rule, we need to have two sides. So in this case, we have 5 centimeters and 12 centimeters, And we also need to have an angle. And in this case, again, the angle is 77 degrees. Therefore, we're going to be using this equation. So it's A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos theta. Okay, so A is always opposite the angle given to us. Now, I'm going to label this side B and this side C. It's going to substitute all the information given to us into the equation. So we have A squared is equal to 5 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 5 times 12 cos 77 degrees. Now I'm just going to simplify it further. So we have a squared is equal to 25 plus 144 minus 120 cos 77 degrees. 25 plus 144 is equal to 169. So we have a squared is equal to 169 minus 120 times cos 77, which equals to 26.994126.52. Now 169 minus 26.994126.54 is equal to, so we have a squared, which equals to 142.00587.35. Now to find the value of a, we need to square root both sides. So a is equal to the square root of 142.0058735. Therefore, A is equal to 0.0058735. Three. I'm going to round it up to one decimal place, so therefore A is equal to 11.9, 1 dp. Now question two involves us finding the missing angle. So we're given all three sides length. So question two now involves finding the missing angle. In this example we are given the measurements of all the three sides. So, for example, on this side, x to z, we have 9.1, z to y, 11.4, and y to x, 14.08 centimeters. Now, what we need to do first is to label the sides either a, b, or c. Now, the length a can be identified as it's always opposite the angle that we require. So, in this example, 11.14 centimeters is a as it's always opposite the angle given to us, x. Now I'm going to label this side b and this side c. Again, it doesn't really matter which way you label it. Now I'm going to write my cosine rule. So a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos theta going to substitute in the values given to us. So A is 11.14. So 11.14 squared. B is 9.1 squared plus 
14.08 squared minus 2 open brackets 9.1 close brackets 14.08 cos theta 11.4 squared is 129.96 9.1 squared is 82.81 14.08 squared is equal to 198.2464 negative 2 times 9.1 times 14.0 is equal to minus 256.256 cos theta now I'm just going to simplify it further just to make it nice and neat so on this side we still have 129.96 is equal to 82.81 plus 198.2464 which is equal to 281.0564 minus 256.256 cos theta. Now I'm going to minus 281.054 from both sides. 281.0564 from both sides. So what we're left with is minus 151.0564 is equal to minus 256.256 cos theta. Now what I'm going to do next is to divide negative 256.256 from both sides. Okay, so what we should have now, just write that out, divide minus 256.256 on both sides so what we should have is 0 0.589630681 oh, both reoccurring is equal to cos theta. Now to find the value of theta, we're going to use the inverse of cos. So theta is equal to the inverse of cos in bracket 0 0.5896306861. Oh, Both reoccurring. Therefore, theta is equal to, let me extend that, theta is equal to 53.869195.36. Going to round it up to one decimal place. So 53.91 dp. And that's your final answer. Now, question three involves us finding the area of a non right angle triangle. So the length given to us are 7 centimeters and 6 centimeters, and the angle is 100 degrees. Now to find the area of a non-right angle triangle, we're going to be using this equation. So area is equal to half times A times B times sine theta. Now I'm going to label this side A and this side B. So that's all the information that we need. So we're going to substitute the values into this equation to work out the area. So area is equal to a half times 7 times 6 times 
sine 100. Plug it into the calculator. Therefore, the area of this non right angle triangle is equal to area is equal to 20.680962814 centimeters squared. I'm going to round it up to one decimal place. So area is equal to 20. Point seven one dp. Question four involves us rearranging the equation to make w the subject. So the first thing I notice about this question is that the denominators are not the same. To make the denominator the same, we're going to multiply this side by 3x, numerator and denominator, and this side by 7z. Now, 3x times 2 is 6x over 21zx plus 14z over 21zx, which is equal to 4w. We're going to simplify this further, so we have 6x plus 14z over 21zx is equal to 4 over w. Now what we need to do next is to cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply both sides by w and both sides by 21zx. So we should have w open brackets. 6x plus 14z, close brackets, is equal to 4, open brackets, 21zx. Going to simplify it further, so just keep this side the same, w, 6x plus 14z is equal to 84zx. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 6x plus 14z. Therefore w is equal to 84zx over 6x plus 14z. 5a is 16 raised to the power of negative a half. Whenever the power is raised to a negative, the answer is always 1 over. So we have 16 raised to the power of a half. 16 raised to the power of a half can be rewritten as the square root of 16. Now the square root of 16 is 4. So our answer is 1 over 4. 5b, 64 raised to the power of negative 1 third. Again, whenever the power is raised to a negative, it is the answer is always 1 over 64 raised to the power of a third, which can be simplified as 1 over third root of 64. 1 over the third root of 64 is 1 over 4. And that's how we answer that question.